By the third day of the match, the Indians were in trouble. If you asked anyone on the third day at lunchtime, who's going to win this game? Every 100 out of 100 would have said Australia because we were in no position to win. Ganguly, as captain, was facing disaster. And this was Eden Gardens, with its taste for riot. So anything was possible. Yet over the next three days, India batted to a score of 657, with one remarkable innings of 281 from batsman VBS Lakshman. You couldn't put it into a novel. This man comes in, he comes in one drop because Ganguly, in an inspired move, demotes Rahul Dravid to number six, who's our customary number three. Lakshman isn't an enormously aggressive batsman in his body language. What he is, is this languid, limber, just beautiful batsman to watch. He stands there and stroke by stroke, he creates this bizarre day in which he and Rahul Dravid bat out an entire day without losing a wicket. On the fifth and final day, Australia needed 384 to save the match. And it's a big shout, he's out! That was beautifully bowled by Tendulkar. Sachin, the master batsman, had chanced his arm. What will the umpire do? Give him out! Wrapped on the pads, yeah, the finger has gone up. He didn't pick up the googly. That was beautifully bowled by Tendulkar. I, I got Hayden, I got Gilchrist and Vaughan. All three wickets were important ones, but Harvajan did him a major damage. Oh, he's battered that. Oh, he's given him! He's given him! Umpire Bansal's given him! That's the end of the test match. India have won. India have won in dramatic style. The whole of Bengal are on their feet. It's the ultimately improbable test match. And because it's played against what is possibly the greatest team in modern times, it's a comeback that is for the ages. And it's immortal also because of what happens next. We win the third match in Madras. So we actually win the series. The next year, success on the raucous terraces of Eden Gardens was followed up at the home of cricketing good manners. At Lord's, in the final of the one-day series against England, there was another dramatic finish. It's got to be a direct hit. Just missed. And they're getting back for two. Saurav Ganguly now behaved in a way which was symbolic of a new mood in India. The fielder had to throw the ball. This time it's Ganguly with his shirt off. You know, we've always harbored thoughts of telling people, listen, get stuffed yourself, but we never did it. We were a great talking nation. We weren't a great doing nation. And they found that when Saurav came along and he actually took that shirt off, people said, ah, someone's actually done it. Someone's done what we wanted to do. And there wasn't a scriptwriter who wrote it for him. He just did it. He was a generation of Indians born almost 30 years after, after Indian independence, who had no sort of colonial baggage, hadn't come with any colonial baggage. Had, you know, this was a man who could say, yes, I'm an Indian, so what? You know, I'm as good as anybody else. You know, it doesn't matter uh, what happened 100 years ago and what my ancestors did. You've got to take me as, as, as I am. And this was a very new, and for many Indians, um, a very liberating voice to hear. Today, India is on the verge of superpower status. A nation that now dictates to the world, buys up the world. India has sent a rocket to the moon, an assertion that for this country, the sky is not the limit. And back on Earth, there is a new cricket tournament that loudly expresses the energy and wealth of a nation in a hurry. It is primarily to revitalize the cricket product for earning opportunity for players. This is the Indian Premier League, a 20 over format invented in England, but now given a very Indian identity. Even before the tournament had actually started, you could actually feel that, you know, this, this tournament is going to become huge. This is, this is going to get massive response.
Inspired by the footballing example of the English Premier League, city-based franchises have been created and sold for over 500 million pounds. $950,000 I'm bid to start here. Players from all over the world are auctioned for sums beyond one million pounds. Chennai, one million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Andrew Flinton. India is a very rich cricketing nation where a lot of people are looking to make investments in cricket. And for the first time, money came out into the Indian cricket market in the form of private enterprise. I think history will record 20 years from now as IPL as the greatest turning point ever in the history of the game. The boss. The IPL is what its marketing men call a premium product, with its east-west mix of Bollywood soundtracks and cheerleaders. For some, 2020 is an affront to the traditions of cricket. I find it suffocating, honestly. I find it um, the most vulgar expression of cricket. It's not cricket, no. <laughs> For those involved, this three-hour eruption of bat and ball is an exciting and lucrative new cricket adventure. I don't think I've experienced anything like the IPL, the intensity and the passion of the crowd, 70, 80,000 at every game, 110,000 at Eden Gardens. It was just electric. It was like a grand final, an FA Cup final, just screaming out at every ball. It was full of action and people loved it. Kids, six, seven year olds also enjoy it because all they keep talking about is sixes and fours, and that includes my son. So I keep telling him sometimes it's not bad to defend. Whatever the reservations, this is consumer friendly, prime time entertainment. The ultimate tamasha you can have at a cricket match. This is a domestic tournament having the world's best cricketers on display and putting on a show as if to say, right, you want to see cricket, you want to see fun, you want to see three hours of entertainment, here are all the world's great entertainers in front of you, what more do you want? And they've got a television audience at home where they say that this television audience reaches out to parts of the public that have never been touched by cricket. The housewife at home, you know, um, in between cooking supper for her family, she can, she can watch the cricket and then, you know, over supper the family can watch the rest of the game. And suddenly there were ratings dropping of other television shows. A friend of mine called up and said, I'm really scared at what this IPL is doing because my wife is asking me what is Albi Morkel's test record and she's never watched a cricket match in her life. It brought a lot of people into the game and combined this razzmatazz. I think it also told Indians that we are at the cutting edge of something that's changing the world. The IPL is the latest chapter in the long story of Indian cricket, from the game of empire to the riches and razzmatazz of today. What a shot! What a shot! Up until now, there has been a kind of harmony between the two parts of the Indian cricketing soul, nourished by test cricket and the one-day game. Not out. Now here is the first sign of real aggression. But there are fears that this big hitting newcomer will end up destroying traditions ancient and modern in India and the wider empire of cricket. Oh, yeah. Yet despite security problems in the subcontinent, Sending the IPL to South Africa, what is clear is that on and off the pitch, all eyes will remain on India. So, a tense World 2020 final between Pakistan and Sri Lanka today. If you missed any of it, all the highlights next on BBC Two.